Arkansas Bigfoot. Glad to have all of our Footius Maximus enthusiasts out here tagging along with us today. Before we get started on today's episode, I'd like to do a special thank you and a shout out to Heavy Hitters Hauling and Handyman Service up near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's a veteran owned and operated company. If you need something hauled off, moved off, stuck, unstuck, built, demolished, maybe something needs to disappear, give these guys a call first. You'll find them on Facebook under Heavy Hitters Veteran Hauling. They had sent us a Stealth Technologies no glow trail cam to try out here in the woods and we brought it out here with us today i'm going to set it up back here once we get moving around and decide on a good place to put it but look these guys up on facebook heavy hitters veteran hauling they're up near lancaster or cochranville pennsylvania we appreciate their service appreciate their service appreciate all our veteran service Well, folks, you're witnessing a bizarre and unusual anomaly. If you look around here, you can see something that we haven't seen in nearly two months, sunshine. So we're going to take advantage of it. And unfortunately, the road crews have been taking advantage of it, too, because I've heard the dump trucks rolling and running today. So if you hear some clanging and banging in the background, that's what is going on with it. I think on the topic we'd like to do today is, you know, over the past decade, last two decades really, there's been a whole lot more Bigfoot sightings and reports than previous. And I think there's a lot of things working in unison to kind of bring that all about. You know, we're kind of overpopulated in a lot of areas and moving out into farms and woods and stuff that we hadn't been 25, 30 years ago. And it would be no different than the suburbs now where you can go down just about any given day and see deer, sometimes wild turkey, sometimes black bear in people's backyards. It's just become commonplace and when we start you know, moving into their environment, they aren't going to leave. They're just going to adapt and be in our environment. And I think that's kind of the way it is with the Bigfoot in a lot of these areas. And it used to be you might have to go up to some high elevation, remote part of the Pacific North, Northwest in order to hope to get some kind of a experience or sighting or a vocalization or something. But anymore, this stuff is happening in people's backyards. It's all over the country. You're hearing more and more reports of it was in my vegetable garden or it was on my back porch or I heard it banging on the side of the house or chickens disappeared out of the chicken coop or, you know, just a number of different things that are being reported that you really didn't hear as much about. Of course, another factor is there's not too many places on the globe anymore that you can't find somebody out in Banger Rock Nowheresville that doesn't have a cell phone and can't connect up to social media. Everybody's connected up and it's instantaneous information at our fingertips, so that has a lot to do with, you know, the reports becoming more frequent. So in a long-winded roundabout way, I know that there's a lot of the viewers that have had experiences and some of you would like to have experiences. Some of you are content to just, you know, watch it from the comfort of your recliner and let all of us other knuckleheads run around out here and do this stuff. But we thought we'd kind of share some of our personal insights and information if you 
are in an area where you think there might be some kind of activity and you just want to go out and poke around for a while and see if you spot anything, you know, what's the worst? That if you see nothing, at least you get a little fresh air and some exercise. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Some of the things you'll notice that, or some of the things that you probably should pay notice to when you're out walking around in the woods. It's kind of how we stumbled on all of this big adventure of ours. And I know that. It might sound like I'm trying to tell you something specific to do or not to do. I'm not an expert. I don't believe anybody is an expert on this subject. We're all just sharing information and trying to do the best we can with what we do or don't know. So this is just our opinion based on our experiences. So take it for what it's worth and hope you enjoy the rest of the video. when we had first started coming out here what tripped us off I came out to look for some trees to cut walking sticks out of and I had noticed a bunch of arches and tree bends that looked unusual and out of place it just didn't look natural and normal and a little bit farther into the woods that we got things just started jumping out at us like how does nature just make something like that fall out of a tree and land in that particular pattern? And it was repeated over and over again as we got farther into the woods. Mm -hmm. And then we started noticing places that looked like little dugout areas inside the brush and inside, you know, a bunch of bramble and thicket that looked like something had been sitting or bedding or laying down in. And the more it went, the more it became obvious that we had some Sasquatch out here. Of course, that really became evident when we found the first footprints out through here. Well, we definitely knew there was something going on. And when we found the footprints, we deduced what we felt was going on. And as time went on, it became even more evident that it wasn't just a single creature, creature or Bigfoot or Sasquatch or person or whatever name you want to utilize for them. There was more than one. We caught glimpses of a female moving through the trees and then we caught glimpses of a younger one moving around off to her side. And Pretty much surmised that we had a family unit out here. And the other day when we were out here, we found a whole new set of prints that look like they're from a tiny, tiny one that might just only be, I don't know, months old, if that. I don't know how big they are when they come out. <laughs> so we might have a, just the whole, family of them out here but you stop and think about it you know like I said about suburbs and you know fringe areas around the towns and stuff like that those have become safe havens for animals there's no hunting pressure for them there not like there is out in the middle of the wilderness where everybody goes out and hunts so it only makes sense that it would be more likely to see one there in your backyard than it would be to hike 10 miles out into nowhere in hopes of finding one where they've got tons and tons of room to move around and hide. And we're not that far from other houses and neighbors and stuff. We're within, you know, a rifle shot of most of them. And that's a sad thing when most people can't walk out their door and throw a baseball and not hit another neighbor's house. That's just how close we've all become. So it only makes sense that things have moved into our space as we have moved into their space.
But if you go sit in the woods and just kind of pay attention and listen, just kind of let yourself be absorbed into the woods for a little while, you'll start to notice the subtle differences and the nuances of the changes going on around you. And it won't be long if there's any type of activity from Sasquatch that you'll recognize it in a heartbeat. You'll see the tree breaks. You'll see the odd, strange glyphs that just look completely out of place. And if you're lucky enough and you've got soft enough ground, they'll leave a footprint for you. We're down here in these soggy bottoms, so we we're lucky in that regard that we probably find more in a month than most people have been able to come across in years out in drier areas. You know, I appreciate and feel for you guys out there in the western states where it's all rock and very little loamy soil to work with. So what would you put together as sort of a tentative Bigfoot amateur hunter kit to walk around in the woods with? jacket in case the weather turns. Depends on their environment too, but you need a flashlight, you need a fire source, some matches or a little something. butane lighter or something like that. So. Be a good idea to throw some type of little first aid kit in your pack. Everybody's got a cell phone with a really, really good camera on it nowadays, so that serves a multi-purpose there. You've got your camera, you've got your phone. It's got built-in GPS and all that stuff, so you've got a huge tool just right in that. And one of the things I would probably also suggest, and we're back here in our own woods, and kind of got a feel for everything going on but if you're going out into a strange place I would definitely say go get you a big can of the bear repellent the uh, pepper spray or something like that Some people might want to carry a sidearm. That's entirely up to you. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't. If you feel that you're in that type of a situation and it gives you a little more comfort, then go for it. I think in more remote areas, these people may not be as used to the human interface as maybe the people we're dealing with. You know, if, if they've been around man, as a whole, they may be more settled. You know, that may be where we're more fortunate. Yeah, that's a point we were talking about earlier today over our coffee was, it seems like you hear, especially in the more remote areas, how aggressive the Sasquatch are toward other people. But, you know, you stop and think you're 100% in their backyard yeah. and they have very minimal encounters or interactions with humans so when they do it's like get out of my space and get out of my space now i can see that 100 percent and you turn around on the other hand and you've got the ones that have been on the fringe of town or on the fringe of subdivisions where they've just kind of been pushed into environments to have a lot more interaction around people to hear them and see them and know what's going on and stuff i think they've learned to be a little more stealthy in the regard of a survival instinct you know where they're not 
coming right out and up and in your face and I think it's just all of it's right the ones that say they've had the really really intense encounters I believe that's correct the ones that say that they've had really passive and you know non-threatening encounters like ours I believe that's 100% correct everybody has a different experience and everybody has a different situation When, when they're on the fringes like these are, I believe as the people, they realize, and we should realize, that it's going to come down eventually if we keep growing and populating the way we have. It's eventually going to come down to whether or not we get along or establish some kind of cooperative relationship, you know, whereas those that are in the remote remote areas may not have that direct awareness and i think they don't you know, have that drive to kind of assimilate themselves into a more populated environment right yeah you know, they're that like, doesn't mean they're going to come up with the coffee or anything but if we're sharing space you know they may be trying to help bridge that a little bit but this is 2020, it's the start of a new decade. We've had a lot of things really expand and grow just in the last two decades. And people that are my age have lived long enough to see more changes in our lifetime than all the generations saw before that. Uh, we were here at the end of the mechanized industrial age, at the beginning of the computer and technology age. We've seen so much in the way of advances and changes and some of it's good and some of it not so good. But we've seen more things in a 50 year span than all the generations before us combined, I think, as far as leaps and bounds of technology and science and in probably another 10 to 20 years, I can't even imagine what it might be. Yeah. My right, God, look at how this is all tore up. You know why? Because we didn't come on our Yesterday, day. we started to come out here for just a few minutes and got a phone call and had to go back up to the house and go take some stuff and we didn't leave anything out here. And they had But we tore. had approached, we had come up here. We had came up to this point and, and then got the call. Wow. This is completely tore to shreds. I think he's a little spoiled rotten. Uh, yeah, I think he's a little pissy and spoiled rotten. I told you he'd be upset. <laughs> I didn't realize he'd do this, but... Wow. So... Uh, he tore everything apart, tore your limbs apart. I had Kicked time to stick those two suckers in, they're gone. Kick dirt in your sandbox. <laughs> He's got a little temper now. So what do you want to do? Do you want to, you want me to clean this up? Yeah, there's a baggie up there from the last time we left stuff up here. But yeah, we made it out here this far yesterday for just a few just minutes. A and too we much were getting pain. ready to <laughs> put some stuff back in the tree and phone rang and had to go back up to the house and go. So we take just aborted, care of something. So, aborted project. So, so we just left it the way it was, knowing we'd come back out here again today. I never would so have expected that. He must have seen us. He's tore this all to pieces. And to be fair, lately, it's become crashingly clear that even when we're walking, sometimes they're right. I mean, when we go back on video or back into photographs, they are right with us when we're walking. So it's best not to think too hard about it but you know i think he was probably not far from us yesterday and saw <laughs> saw yeah, us come back here pretty much given up on the idea of trying to be sneaky quiet and stuff because it's impossible they know you're here before you even get out here why are you being such a butt do you think he was digging thinking we buried it he probably thought there was something down there that dropped that he missed he tore it all to pieces 
uh -huh. I, everything, and then kick dirt in your sandbox to boot, like a spiteful little kid on the beach. What? About half tempted to not leave him anything after that. Well, a spite warrior never helps. So anyway, back on track here, we were talking about things you might want to bring with you. Of course, you've got your camera on your phone. If you've got a better camera to bring, awesome. Um, need something to kind of make a shelter in case you need that, whether it's a big jacket or some kind of a poncho you can put in the pack, some kind of fire starter, lighter, matches, whatever, a little first aid kit make sure you got some water with you walking sticks always helpful if you can manage everything i would probably say a distress whistle of some sort put that in your pocket that way if you got off trail and twisted an ankle real bad or something at least you got something to blow on in hopes that somebody is close enough to hear Good can of pepper spray would be an excellent idea. You know, if I were Sasquatch and somebody took a pot shot at me and made the wrong shot, it would just make me madder than I already was. But if I got hit in the face with a big spray of pepper spray, I'd probably be turning heels. That's just my opinion, but... They say there's never a good result if you... Uh... Yeah, I mean, just Im <laughs> just imagine shooting a grizzly bear in the wrong place that doesn't stop them or slow them down. It's not going to be a happy ending. I don't even think our kids would have done I made a comment on that last video that you're not going to see us out here with elephant rifles trying to bring one back for science and that's absolutely correct but I want you to understand that for most of my working life I have been a gunsmith I've done gun repair built custom rifles did handgun competition rifle competition shotgun competition I'm the last person on earth to accuse of being anti-gun. That's not where I'm coming from at all with that. My entire point was at this particular spot, at this particular situation, we want to develop an understanding instead of shoot first and ask questions later. So I hope I clarified that. with the other one. Well, if he tore this tree up this bad, I wonder what the other one looks like. The same way. But what's funny is it's been bit. He pulled the paper back on it enough to get to the sucker. And it's got a bite mark there, but it also has a bite mark on the end. Chewing on it. <laughs> But it's easy to get distracted and off topic out here when we're walking through because we'll see something that takes us in a whole entirely different direction.
broken. There's one piece and there's another. But looking for the subtle nuances out in the woods that kind of change over the course of a few days or a week or two. And it's obvious when you really pay attention to your surroundings and then you start seeing that, okay, there's a big tree structure over there that wasn't there last week. Or this brush pile looks like it grew legs and walked to the other side of the hill or the other side of the creek. That's weird. Finding the track in the mud is blatantly obvious for anybody, but it's those little subtle things that will put you on the track to find more. Yeah, just doing what we're doing at this level. You know, it's still a little bit of work to go chase down things to bag up to bring out here to put in the trees. And not that it's extremely expensive, but it does cost over time. You know, it's not like it just grows in the kitchen pantry overnight. So it takes a little bit of effort and work and we're out here whether it's raining or rarely when the sun's shining because it hardly ever does this time of year and you just got to have some patience you know junior hadn't acted that way at that tree before but if he saw us and he has been very close lately he was probably expecting more than what he actually got what you see oh i think it's too low to the ground to be anything in particular i saw something at the base of that tree way out there but i think it's just shadow so i think he was digging thinking that we had hidden it or, you know, <coughs> I honestly don't think it was an act of rebellion so much. But to no fault but our own, it would be understandable if they see us to think that there might be a goodie yeah. here and there. Like the kid seeing you come down the hallway with the birthday cake and then you turn around and go the other way. <laughs> what? It's got to be here somewhere. Mm. So anyhow, if you got that itch to get out in the woods and poke around, I highly recommend it. Get you a little fresh air and exercise, look around and see what you can discover. Might not be Bigfoot out there in the backyard, but there's a whole lot of other things that are really worth looking at. Put your little necessities packed together and make sure you got your camera or two and have fun with it. Can't take everything so serious all the time. Alright guys, we were gonna catch you on the next run. I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks.